have your hand up, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. So we talked a couple of times about Amazon and Netflix, uh, how their profitability might be masked because they're investing heavily in customer acquisition. And how do you think about that relative to CRM? How can you, how, how do you try to decipher whether that that's a good investment on their P and L and they should, you know, they, they should show relatively low profitability as they grow versus being more skeptical of that and whether they'll ever, you know, earn a, earn a strong return as you are with CRM. Yeah. Glenn, do you want to take that first? Or you want me to? I, I think you should because uh, of the, the Salesforce experience. Yeah, sure. Um, look, the, this is one of the tough questions in investing. Um, look, you can live a long and happy life as an investor, never investing in companies that have a business model that basically means no profitability for an extended period of time. Um, that's what CRM is doing, as you correctly point out. That's what Netflix and Amazon have been doing for, in, uh, for a long time, which is take every penny uh, that they're earning and plow it back into expanding and growing the business. Um, and, uh, but as we can see from these three businesses, um, these can be exceptionally good stocks to own um, if the, and by the way, I do not think the market is crazy in the case of CRM. Um, I've, I've, uh, I think the valuation is definitely stretched, uh, but uh, I do think uh, salesforce.com is a heck of a good business, even though you, you don't see it in, in the current profitability. Um, because, you know, having millions and millions of customers paying you thousands and thousands of dollars a year with, uh, with, that are very sticky. You know, once you're on one of these platforms, it's very difficult to move off, right? Um, it's not as obvious that Amazon and Netflix, for example, are as sticky, but I actually think they're pretty darn sticky. Um, it would take a team of wild horses to get me to turn off my Netflix subscription. Um, you know, given all the favorite movies I ha I've marked that I still want to see, given I've got my four, uh, three daughters and my wife, you know, uh, and they watch it regularly, right? Um, so Netflix and Amazon have created um, uh, quite sticky businesses um, uh, as well, though, though it's a little harder to see. By the way, Google has as well, um, but Google makes, you know, scads of money as it grows. That's the ideal, right? Um, but um, so the question for you as an analyst is, is you need to think about what does this business look like five, 10, even 20 years down the road? Um, eventually, you know, one way I was talking to a friend of mine years ago and I should have listened to him. I was like, you know, how, how can you own Amazon? He was a value guy and he owned Amazon, I don't know, 200, $400 a share. And I was like, you know, how can you own it? And he said, look, I'm not looking at current profitability. The value of any asset is future free cash flows discounted back to the present. That doesn't mean this year's free cash flows or next year's free cash flows. It means all future free cash flows. Now, obviously, current, uh, you know, free cash flows that accrue to me, the owner in the near term are obviously more valuable than those that are generated uh, five or 10 years in the future, right? That said, if the, if the cash flows are very robust five or 10 years from now, that's worth a lot of money today. So in the case of Amazon, he said, look, I just look at what is the normalized once Amazon rules the world, I think they have a better business model and they are executing better than anybody. So I think they are going to have enormously large revenues five, 10, 20 years from now. And I think if, if, um, if Walmart has a 5% uh, profit net margin um, at its scale, and I think Amazon's gonna have substantially more scale than Walmart and they don't have to operate bricks and mortar stores, they just have to operate these distribution centers. I think Amazon's core business, not counting Amazon Web Services, not counting the advertising businesses growing so rapidly, not counting acting as an intermediary for uh, third parties, all of which have much better economic characteristics, just Amazon's core business of selling stuff. Um, and he said, I think uh, if, if uh, Walmart has a 5% margin, I think Amazon has an 8% margin in, a, in some future scenario when their growth slows down um, and they start uh, harvesting uh, this. So. And he said, you know, you apply uh, very high revenue growth, uh, uh, run that out 10 or 15 years, and then put a 8% margin, uh, net profit margin on that uh, 10 or 15 years out. 
um, you get an extremely large number, which even discounted back to the present is still a very large number today. That was the case. So you could do a similar analysis with Netflix. Um, uh, so uh, one, one piece of analysis that I showed you guys that I did back in the day was, as I said, you know, forget the profitability of the whole business because they're reinvesting everything back into content and international growth. Let's just look at the economics of the incremental customer, right? Another way to look at Amazon would be to look at the economics of an incremental household um, or, you know, one Amazon customer. Um, and, uh, and that's not an unreasonable way to think about what the future profitability of something might look like. So um, anything to add to, um, add to that, Glenn? It, you know, the summary is, is it is very tricky to value companies that are not currently profitable, but it is, uh, I, would, I, I would criticize myself very much over the last 20 years for just not doing the work in most cases on companies that were not currently profitable. I just put them into my too hard bucket. And you know what, uh, that was a mistake. Um, you should have in your investing toolkit, the ability to look at companies, either maybe they're cyclical companies and they're in the down part of the cycle and they're not currently profitable. Well then look out uh, in what, what, they, what their profitability would be like in the mid part of the cycle, <coughs> peak of the cycle, and think about where the stock would be trading then, right? Um, uh, same thing with these sort of high growth uh, kind of companies that are deliberately, they're very profitable on a per customer basis, but they're taking all the profits from their existing customers, plowing it back into future growth. You know, do the work on those. You should, you should be able to have in your toolkit the ability to invest in these kinds of companies. And I was too dogmatic, had too many blinders up, and, and therefore I truncated my universe, and uh, I missed some great stocks as a result. Shame on me.